Now, when we talk about virtual networking, we're talking about virtual switches, really. Because virtual switches are a layer two device, but it's a virtual device that is created at the host level, right? Every host in our environment is going to have a virtual switch so that it can connect to the outside world. Now, when we're connecting to the outside world, we need physical adapters. And the virtual switch is what makes that happen. It creates virtual port groups and physical adapters, a communication medium between the two. So when we're talking about this, I want you to take a look here. I'm gonna take myself off of the screen. On the left-hand side, we have a VM kernel port. Let me underline that. And then down here, we have a port group. Then remember, I said this is just VM data. That's all that is. But we have these two port groups, and that's great. And we have virtual machines that reside inside them that are trying to communicate with the outside world. So this virtual machine, these three virtual machines in here, want to communicate with other virtual machines on other hosts, or maybe even to outside resources outside of our organization. How are we going to make that happen? Well, a virtual switch is what actually facilitates this. Our virtual switch in the middle here is going to take that virtual traffic and connect it up to a physical uplink. This uplink is what's going to move this physical zeros and ones out into the world and off of the host. So when we have this virtual switch, the virtual switch decides this port is connecting to this port and facilitates that connection right there. That's where the magic happens, as one of my friends like to say. Always referred to networking as magic. That's where the magic happens between our virtual and physical environments. This is done through VMNIX. VMNIX is this port right here. That is a V, well, that is a VMNIC. And it connects, those are for port groups and VM kernel adapters. There would be another VMNIC here. And these VM NICs, the switch takes and connects up to our uplink so that we can actually move traffic outside of the host. Now, for port groups and VM kernel adapters, there's lots of settings we can do here. One of them is VLANs, which is how we're going to decide our tagging. So these two are very, very closely related. When I'm setting tagging, I'm actually setting up how the VLANs are going to be set. We also have NIC teaming. If I had multiple NICs in this environment, I could decide to use two NICs to move traffic for maybe in my management network. So I could use NIC teaming to help provide me with a little bit of redundancy and maybe more bandwidth for a particular port group or a particular VM kernel adapter. In virtual switches, I also have traffic shaping, but in this case, I only have it outbound. I can only use this in the outbound direction. So let's move along here. What else can I do with virtual switches? Well, virtual switches, I can set the MTU size. By default, this is 1500. MTU size decides the size of a frame. It is the maximum transmission unit. If I expand up, let's say to 9,000, a jumbo frame, I need to make sure that my entire layer two domain is also set for the same MTU size. So any change you make to the original has to be made to all my layer two domain, which means any other physical switch any other piece of equipment at all that any of this traffic is going to touch on the same LAN or VLAN will need to be set to 9000 as well. I also have some security settings I can set within the vSwitch. I can also do some shaping, traffic shaping. I have teaming and failover options such as load balancing, failure detection, notify switches, failback, all available to me on a virtual switch. I even have the ability to fail over for other port groups if there's a problem to other active adapters. 
So really a lot I can do within the virtual switch. But remember, the whole point of a virtual switch is to take that virtual traffic and map it to an uplink in my environment. So let's take a look at a virtual switch in my environment. Here we are in my environment. Uh, you can see I'm on a host, which is exactly where we want to be. This configuration is on a host, host by host basis for a virtual switch. I'm going to go up to configure and I'm going to go to virtual switches. You can see here we have virtual switch zero already being made. You can see that we have a management network. I'm actually gonna get rid of my recent tasks so we get a better view here. There we go, we have a better view of our standard switch. And you can see I have the management network, a VM network, and a VM motion network. We have multiple physical adapters. And when I click on a port group, watch what happens. It shows me the mapping with that gold line in the middle. It shows me the mapping of this particular port group to the physical adapters. And as you can see, I'm teaming at the moment. I'm using both VMNIC0 and VMNIC1 for our VM traffic. Let's look at the VM motion traffic, see what it looks like there. Again, I'm teaming. So all of these services our management network, our VM motion network, both our VM kernel uh, adapters are using both VMNIC1 and VMNIC0, and our data is using the same adapters as well. I don't particularly like this. I'd like to separate out things more so that I have isolated traffic, and you should as well in your environments. Make sure that you're isolating, especially your management traffic. You don't want that to be solely over the same adapters as your regular data traffic if you can help it. So here we have a virtual switch. Let's create another virtual switch. Let's go ahead and let's say we were creating a vSAN. Now, when I clicked on that create a network, you can see I have VM kernel network adapter, physical network adapter, and virtual machine port group. If I choose any one of these, let's say I'm adding a new physical adapter, something that exists on this particular host, I don't have to select an existing switch. I can create a new standard switch, which is what we'll do. We'll create a new switch. When I click next here, you're gonna see active, standby, and unused adapters. There's nothing listed there. Let's see if we have another one. Ah, we do have another adapter available. We're gonna grab that. So new, VM NIC2 is going to be brought in to actually complete this task. We can see the properties, the speeds, We can see CDP or LDP, Cisco Discovery Protocol, or LLDP, Link Layer Discovery Protocol. And you can see that CDP is supported, but Link Layer Discovery Protocol is not. So that's a very interesting thing to keep tabs on. So you can see we're creating this new vSwitch. It should pop up here in a second. Let's refresh. Refresh one more time. Hmm, I wonder what's going on. Come back to it. Oh, there, it just needed a little bit of time. So we'll look at our vSwitch at one. And you can see that we have physical adapter set up, but there's currently no port groups. So we have an empty virtual switch. This is actually really great for us because in later, uh, later lessons will actually add port groups and VM kernel port groups to this particular switch so we can have connectivity over this VM, VM NIC. We'll create a different route. I can also edit the settings of this virtual switch and you can see there's my MTU size. I can change my MTU size from here as we talked about. Our security settings, promiscuous MAC address changes and forged transmits. We're gonna discuss that a little later, but what I want you to remember here is the defaults. Reject, accept, accept is the default configuration for our security on a virtual switch. Like I said, we have a whole lesson uh, dedicated to th these settings and what they mean. But right now, one of the things I want you to remember, reject, accept, accept, promiscuous MAC and forge transmit. Traffic shaping, like I said, this is only outbound and we can enable and disable from here. We have average, peak, and burst size. Again, we'll cover that in a later lessons as well. And then finally, if it'll let me click on it, come on, you can do it. 
uh, teaming and failover. This is where I would go to configure teaming and failover. And again, we have a, a lesson dedicated to that. But take a look, our virtual switch zero, the gray bar, how things are connecting through. That is how a virtual switch takes traffic from one side, the virtual side, our port groups or VM kernel adapters that we create, and maps it to a physical adapter.